Hey everybody, welcome back. And what we're doing in this video is basically a console window application. And if you don't know what a console window is, if you go to your windows and you hit console, you'll see this prompt. This basically is a console window. Okay, so and you can write applications that work only in that. All the applications are not window-based applications. Like you see this window here and you can see all this sort of stuff. So all applications are not like that. So if you ever wanted to just make a console window where it's not important that it has a, a graphics or anything like that, that's exactly what we're doing here today. Except we're doing it in VB.net because that's what was requested for me on my channel on the VB.net videos and tutorials that I normally do. It was Chaka... Uh, Hamilton that actually requested that we uh, create a video, re you know, addressing creating a menu in VB.net in the console window. So that's what we're doing today. And so um, I'm going to go here to file and click new and click new project. And then in my VB menu, I'm going to make sure I have the console app selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and name that whatever I want. Click OK from there. Once that is complete, you're going to get this uh, templated sort of console window view. If I were to hit F5 on this and run it, or just click on this right here, F5, right here, I'm going to click on that and run it. Now, what happened is it looks like it just popped up and left, right? And sometimes you don't even get to see it, but that's how the console window works. There's no state that automatically tells it to stay open. So what we have to do is we either have to explicitly tell it to stay open inside of our code, or we have to go to debug and start without debugging or hit control F5 and then it'll stay open and control F5 does the same thing but that's not really what we want because we want to now instead of just saying hello world we want to learn how to create some sort of menu that would allow the user to not have to hit debug because remember when we when we uh, compiled this, the user is not going to be using this inside of Visual Studio. They're going to be using it inside the console window. So you don't want it opening and closing like that. So you got to know how to actually make a menu. And for this one right here, we don't really need this anymore. Because what we're going to do is we're going to start creating our own menu here. And what I like to do is write it first. I like to write what I want first as a test and then I can make any helper routines or functions uh, later on. So right now I'm going to give a space from the top. So I'm going to type um, console dot write line and then I'm going to create a space here. <clears throat> Then after that, and remember, I'm just doing this as uh, not necessarily as a test, but I'm not going to go throughout everything right now. I'm just going to do a few things just so I can see how it looks. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type main menu. Okay. Now, I just want to see how that looks. So control F5. Okay. Main menu. That space is there. Perfect. Now I can go ahead and focus on the main loop that I'm going to utilize in this program so I don't have to hit F5 so it naturally stays open and what that's going to be is almost like a mini state machine to where I'm going to check on a variable to see if that variable is a particular number if it is a particular number I'm going to close the loop if it's not a particular number I'm going to keep on looping and so the first thing we need is we need ourselves a loop here so inside of this right here inside of our sub main we're going to use a do loop now there's a do while loop and then there's a while loop but we're just basically using a straight do loop okay so i'm gonna go up here and i'm gonna write do and then it says loop there everything i want to loop i'm gonna put inside of here okay now right after this do i want to go ahead and declare my input value. So I'm dim input. Yeah, I'm just dim input. Uh, input. So, 
I'm going to give myself an if statement. And I'm going to gather the information from the user. So here's my menu. I'm going to gather information from the user here and check what that information is. So technically, all I need to do is console.read. So I'm going to do a read line. And that's going to return whatever the user is doing. Now, while this will work, I need this to be returned. I need this to be added to something like uh, console.readline. And I want this information to go into another variable. I could literally create a variable and make this equal to it. But I think a cleaner version of that would be to use what's called a try parse, which means I'm going to error correct for some weird stuff people can put in the console window while also converting whatever the user puts in there into an integer. And so the way we do that is we type integer dot try parse. And with the within the try parse, I'm going to go ahead and put this read line there. Now, it requires another parameter here or another argument, and that's going to be my input. So if this comes out to be an integer, it's going to try to parse this, whatever the user puts in, into an integer. If it is an integer, it's going to go ahead and put it inside of this input here, which is this variable here. Now I can go ahead and use that information right inside of here. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to evaluate this input inside of a select case. So I'm going to type select. And then that's going to be the input. All right, so if the case is one, two, three, or whatever, I'm going to do something. But I, I'm going to do something like room. So, so if, they're, if they're in the north room, the north, east, south, or west room, I'm going to give a particular description of some kind. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to add more here. All right. And I'm going to add a little note here. That's one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to have one for uh, exit. So when they hit zero, then they can exit the application. So inside of the first one, I'm going to proclaim that this, I'm going to put a little note here. This is the north door. And this will be the east. And this will be exit. So what we have here is, so I'm checking what the user inputs. And the easiest one to check is this exit one here. So in this exit here, underneath my comment, I'm going to put exit sub. So it jumps completely out of this subroutine, which means it jumps out of the program itself because there's nothing else to run from here. So I'm going to hit save, I'm going to hit F5. And now, you notice I just hit F5. I did not hit debug. And so now I have myself an application. There's no information to tell me what to do, but we have ourselves a console application that's constantly running. And it's just waiting for some sort of information without hitting the control F5 or anything like that. So I already know if I hit zero, then hit enter, it closes the application, which means this part worked. Now all I need to do is maybe add some information for the user to be able to, you know, know what they need to do in this application. Um, I'm going to pause this for a second and I'm going to type that out. So what we have here is we have our right line and it tells us, okay, if you hit click on one, if you hit one, this is our menu, go north, hit two, go east, south, west, and so on and so forth. If you hit zero, it, there's an exit. But then on here, I use the new line, so it goes down to the next line automatically. Even though right line does that for us, 
So it's going to add actually two new lines here. And so then here, I have this one that says enter your choice. And then that's when this part right here is checked. Then that input goes into here and it is brought down here. So all I need to now do is add my little message. So when the person puts number one and it goes north, I want there to be some information here. So when it goes north, I'm going to write console right line. And then maybe All right, so let's see how this comes out. So I'm gonna hit save and hit F5. And okay, perfect. So my menu comes up here and it says enter a choice. So we're gonna use North since we know we have that one ready to go. I'm gonna hit one and hit enter. And that's what says you are in the North room. Please make another choice. And it opens up the menu again. Um, and I'm gonna hit zero to escape from there. <clears throat> now, instead of rewriting this over and over again for each one, that's a little messy. What I'm going to want to do is go ahead and create myself a helper method. And I'm going to call this um, print message. <clears throat> the print message is going to take a message on the inside. Let's call that input. And basically what I want is all of this stuff here in here. I'm going to take this input and say you are in the whatever room. Please make another choice. So now I can take this and put it here. And now I can test it again. Hit F5. Okay, and I'm going to hit number one, hit enter. You are in the north room. Please make another choice. Perfect. So now all I need to do is copy this one that I know that works into all of these and just change the name accordingly. And this one doesn't matter because I'm escaping out of that anyway. But the only thing I want to make sure of, so let's say if I uh, let's say if I push a number that's not in here. So let's say I don't push one through four or zero, zero through four. I don't push any of that. So it doesn't give us any input actually. I can put in, although it's not crashing. But it's not telling us anything. It's just it's just going through and it's giving us the menu again. So if I put some number or some letter up in there, it just takes it and goes to the next one. So this is really not a good menu because you got to tell the user, hey, you know, uh, stay within a particular range. So what we need to do is put in a case else here. Like this case else is saying that if the user doesn't select any of these choices here, the case else will then will then kick in. And basically the case else can be something like please select from one to four or how do about zero to four. So please select from zero to four. And then 
That's my if statement. But that's if the read line is here. Just to cover everything, I'm going to put if that was not true. So right before this if, I'm going to put myself an else here. And then I'm going to say the same thing as I said here. So I'm just covering my basis here. So if this was not true, it's still going to jump to this. So you can't bypass this whole thing here. Then it exits the loop. It looks like I'm done with my menu. This is really good. So here we go. I'm going to hit F5. And then I'm going to hit 1. Yep. 2. Yep. 3. Yep. As you can see, it says the south room. 4. The west room. And then I'm going to put gibberish there. Put gibberish. Please select from one from 0 to 4. And I'm going to put a number that doesn't exist there. And it says, please select from 0 to 4. And I'm going to put a, a symbol there. And it says the same thing perfectly. So we, we, have, we have ourselves a menu that won't crash on us. And we can use it to develop our game or application or whatever we want. Now, there's a lot of things we can do with this. Obviously, we're rushing through this in a way because... We shouldn't have to necessarily keep repeating this menu. That's kind of up to you. You know, you might want to repeat the menu um, when you're asking one to select between one and four, just so they can see the menu. So that's up to you. Uh, maybe you don't even want the menu to show up again. And if that's the case, then you can put this menu inside of a function that will then decide whether to return the menu or not. But that's just adding on to this. Right now, what we have ourselves is a completed menu in VB.net. And if you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And make sure you subscribe and make sure you watch some of my videos and make sure you click about a million times on all my videos so that way I know that this is worth it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.